Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. <coughs> All right. Sorry. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Habari. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, once again, I'll repeat. Uh, I would like to thank you for convening this annual open debate on peacekeeping operation. I also would like to thank USG uh, Lacroix, Jean-Pierre, for his comprehensive briefing on the progress of peacekeeping reform particularly on the implementation of the Action for Peacekeeping or A4P initiative. As usual, Jean-Pierre have um, given us a very uh, insight on, on what's happening. Now, as we speak, uh, COVID-19 continues to pose challenges to the work of peacekeeping operation and hinder our efforts to effectively implement the A4P. Despite the challenges, however, we should keep up the momentum and continue our collective work to improve and strengthen peacekeeping operation. In this context, Indonesia wishes to highlight the following points. First, strengthening partnership for training and capacity building. Indonesia has and will continue to advocate for stronger partnership to improve training and capacity building. This is also in line with the presidential statement on training and capacity building which was adopted during our first presidency of the Council in May of last year. Our peacekeeping training center in Bogor has been very active in not only training our own personnel, but also providing training and capacity building for international participants. We were recently preparing for hosting training on engineering under triangular partnership project, which unfortunately now has to be postponed to next year due to COVID-19. Even during the pandemic, the center continues to train and prepare our personnel. Earlier this month, we deployed 210 peacekeepers to join our foreign police units or FPU and engineering company in MINUSCA and UNAMID on a rotational basis. All personnel undertook the mandatory pre-deployment training to prepare them to serve in the missions. As I have mentioned on previous occasion, Indonesia has always championed community engagement by peacekeeping mission. During the COVID-19 pandemic, community engagement has become even more important for peacekeeping to win the hearts and minds of local population and to better protect and serve its needs. That is why we always include community engagement as an essential part of pre-deployment training to its peacekeeper. The second point, is ensuring the safety, security, and health of peacekeepers. Peacekeepers are deployed in increasingly dangerous security environments, which often put their lives at risk. This trend was also mentioned by USG Lacroix, whereby threats to civilians have not decreased in the past six months. We pay tribute to all personnel who gave the ultimate sacrifice in this noble endeavor. We strongly condemn attacks against peacekeepers and urge host countries to swiftly investigate and bring perpetrators to justice. We also urge the Secretariat and Member States to continue improving the safety and security of peacekeepers, including through the effective implementation of Resolution 2518 of 2020. Moreover, as COVID-19 continues to spread, in countries hosting peacekeeping mission, the Secretariat needs to redouble its efforts to improve medical capacity and take necessary measures to ensure the safety, health, and security of peacekeepers. The third point is on increasing women's participation in peacekeeping operation. As emphasized by Jean-Pierre, women peacekeepers have increased the effectiveness and overall performance of peacekeeping mission. Together with their male counterparts, women personnel can play diverse roles and tasks in the mission, including in community engagement and protection for women and children. The consensus adoption of Resolution 2538 of 2020, the first ever resolution on women peacekeeping during Indonesia's presidency in the Council of last month, served as the basis and momentum to reinforce our collective commitment to promote the full, effective, and meaningful participation of women in peacekeeping. The unity of the Council and overwhelming support from Member States to this resolution 
reflect the high priority that the international community has accorded to the indispensable role of women in peacekeeping operation. We must now translate this resolution into concrete actions. On its part, Indonesia takes pride in deploying more than 570 women peacekeepers since 1999. Currently, there are 158 Indonesian women peacekeepers in seven peacekeeping missions. And we will continue to increase the participation of our women peacekeepers, including by providing, providing training and capacity building for them. Finally, I would like to underline the importance of providing clear and realistic mandates for peacekeeping mission that are backed up by strong political support and adequate, adequate resources. Mandate also should include the role of women peacekeepers. Adequate resources are not only crucial for peacekeeping mission to carry out their mandates effectively, but they are also vital for the TCC, PCC to maintain their operational capabilities and performance, as well as to ensure sustained contribution in the long term. TCC, PCC should also be able to plan ahead and thus the need for reliability of resources as well as mandates. We therefore urge all member states to fulfill their financial contribution in full and on time, and accordingly urge the Secretary to pay reimbursement to the TC TPCCs without delay. To conclude, let us be reminded that peacekeeping is a collective undertaking that requires all stakeholders to perform their responsibilities. In these challenging times, we must reinforce our partnership and provide full support to our Blue Helmet. I would like to underline once again in terms of concrete action that are being seen by people on the ground is the blue helmet. And thus, we need to continue to support them with all the availabilities, with all the resources that we have. Blue helmet really represent the United Nation as such in the ground. We, Indonesia, as a long-standing supporter of peacekeeping and a top TPCC, remains firmly committed to contribute and strengthen peacekeeping operation. May the Blue Helmet have a safe and concrete action on the ground. Thank you. Le représentant de l'Indonésie a-t-il fini Parce que je ne l'entends pas et je n'entends pas la traduction. Yes, I finished my statement. Donc, je remercie le représentant de l'Indonésie pour sa déclaration. Je donne à présent la parole à la représentante de la Fédération de Russie. Господин председатель, хотели бы выразить признательность заместителю секретаря Жан-Пьер Руслуа за его брифинг операционных проблемах, которые возникли для них в связи с Рассматриваем миротворческие операции в качестве ключевого инструмента в арсенале ООН по поддержанию международной безопасности. Выращивается в опасных условиях, осознанно 